I cried out to the Lord with my voice, to God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord, my hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart. And my spirit makes diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favourable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promise failed for evermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Selah. And I said, This is my anguish, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you, they were afraid. The depths also trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies sent out a sound. Your arrows also flashed about. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, your path in the great waters, and your footsteps were not known. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together Psalm 77. Another Psalm of Asaph, a song to be sung, meditated on, thought about. The refrain Selah means pause and think about this. We don't have time to pause as I read it to you now, so I commend these words to you. Take time over them, because they are words that can feed your soul when you take them in carefully. Asaph's situation is that he's in trouble, and he's called out to the Lord, but the Lord doesn't seem to be answering. And so the question comes, will God ever answer? How long must I wait? But he responds to that question by remembering how great God is and recalling the way that God has acted in the past for God's people. And because God has acted for his people in the past, he will act for them in the future because there is a covenant relationship and God keeps his word. So I cried out to the Lord with my voice, to God with my voice. The main reason people don't have their prayers answered, they never call upon the Lord in the first place. James points that out to us. God won't answer your prayer if you just assume that he knows what you want. He desires you to speak to him. He wants a relationship with you. So Jesus taught us to ask and keep on asking, to knock and keep on knocking, to seek and keep on seeking. For he who asks receives, and he who knocks the door is open, and he who seeks finds. But if you don't bother asking, nobody will give. If you don't knock, the door won't be open. If you don't seek, you will not find. So I cried to the Lord, and he gave ear to my voice. The first thing we learn is that God listens to our cry. In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord. We are to seek the Lord when we get into trouble. He can help us. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. 
I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. If you've done something against God, then you need to be troubled. And sometimes things that happen in our life are a consequence of our own actions. And we need to come with repentance and seek mercy on the Lord. But whichever way, whether we are praising him or complaining to him, let us cry to the Lord with our voice. For the Lord sustains us. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. And so in Romans 8 we find that the Lord prays for us with petitions that can't be uttered. He knows the will of the Father and he prays for us accordingly even though we don't know what to say or what to ask for. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart and my spirit makes diligent search. We are to seek the Lord. We are to search for the Lord. He is looking for us and searching for us, but we need also to be looking for him or we'll walk right past him. We might want him but never notice him unless we meditate within our heart to understand the ways of the Lord and remember the things that he has said and done. When we remember these things, we see he's acted in the past. Why doesn't he seem to be acting now? Has he cast us off forever? The nation of Israel could well begin to doubt that the Lord will ever help them since they have rejected their Saviour, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promise failed forevermore? No, God's going to keep his promises. Has God forgotten to be gracious? It's his character. He can't forget. Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? It's his character to be merciful. Yes, he brings justice and judgment, but he is merciful. So I said, this is my anguish, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. The Lord Jesus called us to take the bread and the cup in remembrance of him. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember the Lord's death till he come. When we remember, we should also meditate on what God has done. The value of coming together with other Christians is that you can search out together and talk of what God has done. Remember what God has done. Explore what God has done. Because your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is a great God as our God? There's no other God who has done the wonderful things that the God of heaven has done in creation, but also in judgment, but also in rescuing his people. You are indeed the God who does wonders, and you have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people, redeemed them from Egypt, and now redeemed them from death. And that is a historical fact, redeemed the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and were afraid. Asaph is looking back to creation and to the flood. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 says, The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And then there was the judgment that came in the time of Noah, when through the water God brought judgment on the earth. Your lightnings lit, lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, your path in the great waters, and your footsteps were not known. What God did both in creation and in the flood, it is beyond our comprehension. But you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. God is so great in creation, and yet he is also personal to those people who follow him, if you are in his flock. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders.